Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks, Greg, for that intro. And I would like you to meet Buckets. Um, if any of you has been on the cloud, you have definitely used S3. But we, even those of you that have never had a single EC2 instance, you have used my product, which is S3, and this is Buckets. Because think Netflix, think Disney, think any static website. If you have used it, seven out of 10 chances that it was having some of its assets in a bucket. What you're seeing over here is the builders that build these amazing products. So whether it's in the dimension of security or safety, reliability, availability, 11 nines of durability, that is what we do, folks. Now, you can see some personas in here. There's a manager of product managers, there is principal product manager, and senior product manager. Now, I want to zero in into Dave, who is our senior product manager that just moved on to principal role. You would think life would get better for Dave, but it doesn't. He's still an individual contributor with massive workflows and talk about all of the collaborations. And folks, when you think about S3 and 700,000 data lakes that we manage, tier one and tier two means massive improvements. We are not just dealing with hundreds and thousands of enterprises, it's billions of users at the end of it. So it is natural to have Richard Hendrick moments. You will think about BII, you will think about things, GDPR, things that can go wrong, SEV1, SEV2, SEV3 tickets. But if that is happening to you for your product, so be it. But if it's happening to you because of operations, that shouldn't be an option. And every product manager, um, by the way, this is Dave in AWS. There is a Dave in your organization, or maybe that Dave is you, right? So it applies to everybody. Think about your on-call product. Uh, and once you have these on-calls, you are bombarded with tickets and calls and escalations, and you now become the face of the organization. You have to answer questions that are within your domain, and you have to answer questions that are outside. Sometimes it's as simple as pinging someone and getting the answer on the spot, but what do you do when that person is on a vacation or worse, on a customer call? Well, don't you wish that your ticket IDs and ticket text becomes this? Automatically classified into category, priority, ETA, and response? This was my mission for Dave at AWS and for Dave in your organization for all the product managers out there. Of course, I started, looked at the data and found that most of this was in XLS, CSV formats. So uh, first stop, Pandas. What did I get from Pandas? Great visualization, but that didn't really solve the problem. So I went into machine learning algorithms, did some um, decision trees, random forest, bagging, boosting. What did that give me? A uh, great classification, but still didn't solve the problem. And what did people say? Hey, if you're not the frog that's living under the well, then you better see the transformers. Attention is all you need. Don't you know about the decoders? Of course, yes. So I thought probably if I peppered it up with some great instructions, that should do it. My first stop, prompt engineering. And you could see that with prompt engineering, I was able to get it. Um, all of the categories, ETA, priority, responses, but context was missing. Everything was immediate, everything was high, and you could understand that something was not right, and that something was context. How did I solve it? RAG, what is a RAG? Glad you asked. Um, and in a RAG, what I simply did, let me get my pen in here, there's a lot of information but just putting your knowledge base to the LLM. So now my question is context aware and my response knows what the question is. Now you can see when I'm doing it and I'm asking what are the five priority levels, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it gives me a level of priority. Not everything is immediate. Um, what does priority one means? It's lower, flexible. What does five means. Well, now it's based on the data and it's doing that. And so when I ask a question like um, directly from the ticket, I'm getting answers like a hardware issue. 
And it seems like my job for Dave is done, except folks, give it 30 tickets and four things that I have to do. And that means 120 runs. So there has to be a better solution. And that solution has to come through automation. So I tried something interesting there, and that is automating a RAG pipeline with helper functions. It is at the essence of the ticket copilot. Now, everything that they've wanted is done. All they've now has to do is either amend the response or approve the response, of course. Some responses that the LLM gives are past the Turing test and you can just throw it off to the customer. Other times they would have to jump in and say, no, it's better that I give a call to the customer. But all you have to do now, instead of generating those 120 run folks is 30 runs. So for a ticket sample size of 30, your productivity is up by 75% and your steps have gone down from 120 to 30. We've already talked about the architecture previously. Um, we are taking the knowledge base, splitting it into chunks and creating embeddings. For my embedding, I'm using the vector store uh, from Meta, so fast vector store, but this is where I want you to focus on. I'm using the same Q8 chain, but putting helper functions around it. So since I'm using pandas, now, what I can do is call those functions over and over again. So Dave doesn't have to keep a track of the tickets and the output is generated for Dave. And how does that look like? This is our chain. And this is one of the functions for generate category. I have four additional functions like this, which will automate it and get the responses out for Dave. And now all I have to do is I'm using a data frame so using a Lambda function, it will loop through the function, take the first value, go on to the last one, and till it's finished, it will not stop. As a result, what do I get? This is what they have had, right? Remember the early picture? And he wants everything classified and prioritized and set an EDA and a response. Folks, category, priority, ETA, response. And Dave doesn't see it like that. Dave sees it like this, a neat Excel file that he can download and doesn't have to get started from a blank slate. Now Dave can get product management back into his life and leave the ticket management to the LLM, which is your friendly sidekick. Now uh, for this project, I am on a monthly subscription. Uh, I didn't need the subscription, but it cost $10 if I do the bill of materials. So the GPU cost on $10 monthly would be around 33 cents. So I did it for two days. Uh, the LLM cost for embeddings and such uh, was $2.58. So my total bill was $3.24. And it took about 15 minutes for something that took Dave entire days. Of course, this is a work in progress. I am nowhere close to done. There are so many improvements that we can get, and this is on the roadmap. Um, I have to test it on production workloads. There has to be A-B testing. I need to do tracking. Uh, I'm planning about introducing dashboarding, and then, of course, front-end rollout enhancements and such. But when I shared with my community of product managers, I have already had interest from 25 of them, and they're asking for code, and they're just willing to take it for a test drive. So the product is in beta. Open for testing, feedback, and collaboration. I know that there is a lot to be done. Uh, the end goal is to make it fully automated, and there is a series of steps. But I had to do my code freeze so I could take it in the real world and see what are the missing steps. With that, thank you for your time and open to any questions.